Home Office gives you unlimited amount of freedom to really make your environment your own. As a work from home graphic designer, I wanted my space to feel warm and cozy, a place where day or night I'm able to come in, work on projects feeling inspired and less like I'm in an office cubicle. So without wasting any more time, my name is Robert and let's start the desk setup tour. Starting with the desk, which is actually the newest addition to the setup. This is a Beflo Tenon, which is a gorgeous sit-stand desk, which actually feels more like a luxury piece of furniture rather than a desk, which really suits into my whole aesthetic of trying not to make my office look like an office. It has a range of uniquely designed features, such as this gap towards the back of the desk where you can feed wires through, as well as this ambient light strip, which fits in perfectly with the entire setup and this touchscreen control panel, which just elevates the desk to a whole new level. And if that isn't luxurious enough for you, you can even control the desk with your phone, which is just crazy to think about. For those wondering what my configuration is, I have the red oak version of the Beflo Tenon. The chair of choice is the Saihu Doro C300, and so far I have absolutely no complaints with this chair. It looks great with its unique design and is much comfier than all of my other desk chairs. I am hoping to one day own a Herman Miller Aeron chair as I only ever hear great things about it, but for now I'm really happy with the C300. Next up is the monitor and I chose to go with the Apple Studio display. And even though it does have that high price tag attached to it, it was definitely an item that I didn't mind splurging on. As I'm practically glued to my monitor all day with my 9 to 5 job of being a graphic designer as well as creating content for social media afterwards. And considering how few options there actually are for 5K monitors, the Apple Studio display might actually be the best deal, so long as you're not a gamer. But overall, the screen and the monitor itself look amazing, and I'm sure I won't be replacing this monitor anytime soon. On top of the monitor, I have the BenQ screen bar halo, which essentially lights up your desk without any of the light reflecting off your screen and causing glare. It comes with this wireless controller where you can control the brightness and the color temperature. And overall, it's just a nice addition to the setup, especially when I'm filming so I can have my desk all nicely lit up. And on top of that, I also have an Opal C1 because as we all know by now, the built-in webcam in the Mac Studio isn't that great. As well as they're producing great quality video, the overall design of the product itself is stunning. So it fits right at home in my setup. To partner the studio display, I have the Mac Studio. I used to use my 2019 Intel MacBook Pro connected to the monitor itself, but it started to get quite slow, so I definitely needed an upgrade. This is the base M1 version of the Mac Studio, and I've really put this thing through its paces, and I've never heard the fans come on once. Whether it's long design sessions or editing a ton of footage, I know confidently that the Mac Studio just won't skip a beat. So if you're looking to upgrade your Mac and you can't really decide between all the different M versions, I would highly recommend looking at an M1. Considering we're at M3 already, you could probably get a really good bargain getting an M1 version. The keyboard and mouse of choice is the Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and the Logitech MX3 Master Mouse. I used to use the Keychron K2 keyboard and though I do really love the sound of a mechanical keyboard, There's something about an Apple keyboard that just makes the whole typing experience so smooth. As well as having the Touch ID feature, which just comes in so handy when logging in or paying for stuff. And I don't think much needs to be said about the Logitech MX mouse. It's pretty much a perfect mouse and I can't recommend it enough for most people. Probably what I take the most care and attention to is my lighting. I'm a big believer that the right lighting can transform any setup regardless of what's actually on your desk. I personally prefer a cozy atmosphere, so I tend to stick to a warm white light. I have this Lattes floor lamp from Ikea, which I've probably butchered the name of, which personally I think makes the space feel a lot more homely. I also have this O'Hara desk lamp from Wayfair, which can be a massive pain to film sometimes, but it really does pay off when you get it right. I also have two Philip Hue play bars on the back of my monitor and all of these lights can be controlled by my phone using the Hue app as I have Philip Hue bulbs in both of my lamps so I can easily control the brightness and set themes for different parts of the day. 
It's always nice to have a few knickknacks on your desk to really show off your personality a bit more. One item that I have is a Google Nest Hub, which really is only there because I have a Google doorbell. So when anyone does use the doorbell, it will notify me and bring up the camera view. Next to it is a Michael and Dwight Funko Pop, because if you know me, you know that I'm obsessed with the Office US, not the UK version, because that is awful. The two Funko Pops are definitely the items that people love to see when I post my desk setup on Instagram. And it's probably the items that have never left my desk over the years. And on the other side, I have an Ugmonk Analog, which I find so handy when I have an idea that just pops in my head randomly, so I can just quickly jot it down. As well as the overall product just looking gorgeous, and it's definitely an item that I've wanted on my desk for a long time. Oh, and I also have a plant because you just can't have a desk set up without a plant. Also, if you want to check out any product I've mentioned in this video, I'll make sure to make a list of it in the description. The last piece to my setup is this amazing Dark Knight poster by my favorite designer, Ollie Moss. I've been such a huge fan of Ollie Moss's work ever since I found out who he was back in university. So I was over the moon when I was able to pick this up. As you can probably tell, I like to keep my setup clean and minimal throughout. And even though I'm really happy with how the setup is looking at the moment, there's still some things I would like to change. The most obvious is the wall behind my desk, because it's completely empty. And that's really because I have no clue what I want to do with it at the moment. One idea I like is to have a long floating shelf above my desk, where I can put more knickknacks and aesthetically pleasing plants. Or I could just hang a couple more pieces of artwork like I have in one of my previous setups. But do leave a comment and let me know what you think I should do. So there you have it, there's the start of my 2024 cozy desk setup. And if you do have any questions about my setup, do leave a comment and I'll make sure to answer it. But thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.